Dearly beloved, we are gathered here together in the sight of God and man to join together this man and this woman in the sacred bond of holy matrimony. Marriage is a God-ordained, sacred and spiritual covenant between one man and one woman. It is never to be entered into lightly or without reverence. The scriptures declare that God created man and woman for the divine purpose of being joined together permanently in marriage. The Bible says that a man is to leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and the two shall become one. The Bible also tells us that what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Who gives this bride to be married to this man? John, would you please step forward and take your bride? May we join together in a word of prayer today. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you this afternoon, mindful of this sacred moment, mindful of this union that Lord is about to take place. We thank you for every blessing. We thank you for John and Olivia. We thank you for their family and friends who are gathered here today. Lord, we pray that you would bless Our time together, bless this ceremony, but above all, would you bless John and Olivia as they begin this new chapter and new season of their lives. We thank you for your promises that will go before them in all of their ways. We thank you now in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. John and Olivia, today is the day. We are rejoicing with you. But before I get started, there are a few individuals that I want to recognize today. Barry and Lana, Ephraim and Maria. We honor you today and we say thank you for all the investments and all the sacrifices that you've made in the lives of your children. You have had a monumental part in this moment in who they are and where they go from here. And so we want to recognize you and say thank you for everything that you have done for them. 
We also, on behalf of John and Olivia, would like to say thank you to everyone who has had a part in this celebration today. We thank all of those who've helped, whether it be decorations or tearing up, setting up, tearing down, all the little details that go on behind the scenes. We know this is John and Olivia's day, but we say thank you and we recognize you for everything that you've given. Your love and your labor has not gone unnoticed, and we want to say thank you for everything you've done. Now, John and Olivia, it's just us. (laughs) It is an incredible honor to stand before you today, to be a part of your incredible, amazing day. As your pastor, I want to take a moment to go to God's Word, and I want to share a few verses with you and a few thoughts with you today. The Bible reminds us that God's Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path to guide us and to show us the way. It also says that we are to hide God's Word in our heart that we might not sin against Him. Jesus taught us that there's great reward in honoring the Word of God and obeying the Word of God. But there is also great devastation and great destruction when we don't obey it. So that is the foundation today. It's not your emotions, though they're probably running pretty high right now. But you you guys know, and we've talked about this, that there are days that those emotions will be there. And there are going to be days those emotions aren't going to be there. You have to rest upon the Word of God. That is your foundation. There is a passage in Ecclesiastes that says this. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him back up. Again, if two lie down together, they have warmth. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. But a threefold cord is not easily broken." John and Olivia, today is a day of new beginnings. It is a day of new blessings, new opportunities, and new challenges. So what I'd like to do is share with you four words to remember. Yes, there will be a quiz in five years to see if you remember what these words are. The first word is celebrate. Today is a good day. John, the Bible says, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Every one of us today have a reason and we have a right to celebrate. I know it can be tense in a moment like this, but it is a joyous occasion. We celebrate how God has brought the two of you together. We celebrate on how God has prepared each of you for this moment. And we celebrate in everything that God is going to do from this day forward. Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, made this observation. Two really are better than one. You are better together. And sorry to throw this in, but as Rocky said to his wife, you've got gaps, I've got gaps, together we fill the gaps. You are stronger together, you are going to accomplish more together, and you're going to go further together, and that's the way God designed it. Today, your lives will become enriched, and your lives will become enhanced. The Bible says, Olivia, an excellent wife is a crown unto her husband. So today we celebrate, it is a good day. But that's not the only word, because if that's all we build it on, it won't stand. The second word is cooperate, is cooperate. Solomon recognized the power that we bring to each other's lives. He says, if one falls, the other will lift him back up. The truth is, John and Olivia, you need each other. You cannot go it alone. Because Solomon said, woe to him who's alone when he falls, for he does not have someone to lift him up. In order for that to happen, you're going to have to learn to cooperate. You're going to have to learn to work together. Olivia, there will be times when John is struggling and John is down. He will need you to be there to pick him up. And John, there will be times when Olivia struggles and Olivia is going to be down. And she's going to need you to be there to pick her back up. God has designed us this way. Our strengths and weaknesses complement each other so that we can become complete. I want to challenge you guys. Avoid competition. 
Now, both of you are very competitive, and that's probably the understatement of the day. But in marriage, it's not a competition. It's a cooperation. Avoid comparison. Don't compare yourselves with anyone. You are marrying each other. Avoid criticism. It's going to take work. And as any married couple in this room will tell you guys, it's not easy. It will take patience. It will take forgiveness, understanding. But remember, you are in this together. Stand together. Stick together. Stay together. Fight for each other. Now listen, you are on the same team even when you're mad at each other. So cooperate. You're, gonna in, you're in this together. So we celebrate, but we understand we must cooperate. Number three is the word communicate. I made it easy for you to remember all these. You notice that. Solomon says, if two lie down together, they have warmth. But how can one be warm alone? This speaks of companionship. It speaks of friendship. The goal of your marriage is to become best friends. It speaks of relationship. And the only way that a relationship can truly grow is if there is constant communication between the two of you. So today as you begin your journey, share your heart with each other. Share your dreams with each other. Share your mind, your fears, your struggles. The Bible says you two shall become one. And as you learn to share with one another, as you learn to communicate, God supernaturally begins to bring you together. It's not easy for two people with two different personalities and two different backgrounds. It's not easy to come together and make it work. But we talked about how two gears have to learn to work together. The only way that can happen, guys, is to communicate on a regular basis. And a part of that is listening. A part of that is listening. And you're going to have to learn, this. as Solomon said, there's a time to speak and there's a time to refrain from speaking. A part of communication is not only sharing, but also learning to listen. And sometimes our spouse, the only thing they need us to do is just to listen. Not give advice, not counsel, but just to listen. Because the more you do that, the more your hearts begin to meld together. Let me say this, guys. The moment you stop communicating with one another, an invisible wall begins to build between the two of you, and you will begin to grow apart. Never, ever, ever let a wall come between you. Tell each other you love each other every day, even when you're mad at each other. Tell each other you appreciate each other, but always communicate. It is the seed that makes it grow. So we celebrate. It's a good day. But we understand it's going to take cooperation and communication. And finally, the fourth word is the word consecrate. Consecrate. It's amazing to me, John and Olivia, how many people, and I've done weddings for, who want a ceremony like this, and they want God to be in their ceremony. But then the day they walk out that door, they forget about God. I'm going to tell you right now, with all the love that I have for you, if you leave God out, you will not survive. I'm telling you that now. If you leave God out, you won't make it. Life is too difficult. Listen to what Solomon said. The one may be overpowered, two can withstand him, referring to the enemy, but a threefold cord is not easily broken. The two of you are tying the knot today, but you need a third strand in order for the knot to survive. And that third strand is the person of Jesus Christ. It's not religion, it's not the church, it is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Mark it down, you do have an enemy who seeks to destroy this marriage today, okay? Don't give him an inch or he'll become the ruler. Guard your emotions. Guard your words. Guard your affections. Guard your heart because everything in this world seems to be geared to destroy the marriage. The strength of your relationship with each other is going to be in direct proportion to your relationship with God. Jesus Christ is the one who's going to hold you together. Without him, you surely will fail. So pray together. Read your Bibles together. Go to church together, or you will hear from me. <laughs> Serve together. But guys, put God first. The Bible says if you will honor him, he will honor you. 
Life can be difficult, but if you'll keep Jesus at the center, he'll keep you through it all. So, we celebrate, breathe, but we also know we have to cooperate, we have to communicate, and we have to consecrate. And I promise you, with God, all things are possible. So, is this when we take up the offering? Just kidding. (laughs) Considering all these things, John and Olivia, you are now called in front of your family and friends to pledge your lives to another. John, do you take Olivia to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's holy ordinance of marriage? Do you pledge to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto her so long as you both shall live? I do. Olivia, do you take John to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's holy ordinance of matrimony? Do you pledge to honor him, love him, comfort and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto him so long as you both shall live? Today, John and Olivia have prepared personal vows that they would like to share with each other. And so at this time, if you will, prepare to share those vows. John, we'll begin with you. On May 20th, I got a message from you asking about my love for music. It was a perfect opening line for me. I knew knew then that you were great at communicating. One month later, after three or, four lo- three or four hour long nightly talks, I flew here to ask you to be my girlfriend. Olivia, I knew before I saw you that I would commit to you. I love talking with you. We could talk forever. You're sold out for God. You're smart. Express what you think. You're fun, <laughs> random, have great fashion sense, <laughs> love to sing, and are super competitive. You encourage me. You build me up. Remind me of what I'm supposed to do, like saying I love you before I hang up. <laughs> I firmly believe that you are the one you are the answer to my prayer when I finally gave this decision to God. You are everything I need and more. I said it when I asked you to be my girlfriend. I, s- I said it when I asked you to marry me. And I'll say it again now. I am sold out for you. Everything I have is yours. And I'll sacrifice whatever I need to in order to follow God and for you. I vow to be a man worthy of leading you. I vow to place you second only to God. I vow to pray every day for God's guidance. I vow to only speak to you with love. I vow to fulfill my duties as a husband according to the Bible. And I vow to enable your free spirit. And I ask for everyone's prayer for us. My dearest John, It is incredible to see this beautiful journey the Lord has created for us. You see, this journey started long before we met. (laughs) Jesus has so faithfully put people in our lives that have helped shape us into the man and woman of God we are today. I remember the first time I prayed for you. I was 15 years old and excited that one day I might get married. When I was 18, I decided to make a very specific list. I prayed for someone that included someone with light hair, blue eyes, and someone that was tall. The Lord has once again outdid himself, (laughs) for I not only got this, but I got a man who loves Jesus first and seeks after the Lord's guidance and wisdom. I got an incredible man who values good character and integrity, a man who without fail reminds me every day how loved I am and who always makes me feel like I am enough. I even got someone who sings to me every day and makes me laugh. I stand here as a testimony that our Father truly longs to give us the desires of our hearts. So in the presence of God and our loved ones, I'd like to make my vow to you from Luke 1.16. Where you, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Johnny, I vow to submit myself to you as I do unto the Lord, to be faithful to you alone, to honor and respect your decisions and authority as a leader of our home, to daily choose to love you in the good times and bad. <laughs> Lastly, I vow to continue seeking the Lord with you every day to further the kingdom of God. I love you so much, Johnny, and I can't wait to see what the Lord has in store for us. John, I would like for you to repeat these following words to Olivia. I, John, take you, Olivia, Olivia. to be my wedded wife, wife. 
to have and to hold, to have and to hold from, this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for, better or for, worse, for richer, for poorer, for richer or for poorer in, sickness and in, health, in sickness and in health, and to love and cherish, and to love and cherish till death do us part, to death do us part according, according to God's holy word. Olivia, would you please repeat your vows to John? I, Olivia, take you, John, I, Olivia, take you John to be my wedded wife, husband. Just seeing if you were listening. <laughs> to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, and to love and cherish till death do us part, according to God's holy word. You just smile and take my hand. You've been there, you understand. It's all part of a grander plan that is coming true. The every long lost dream led me to where you are. Others who broke my heart, they were like northern stars. That God bless the broken road that led me straight to you. John, of this union, what symbol do you offer today? 
Could I have the bride's ring, please? As I said, it's a day to celebrate. <laughs> John and Olivia, when God made a covenant with Noah so many years ago, he placed a rainbow in the sky, and this is what he said. He said, I will look upon it that I remember that this is an everlasting covenant. John and Olivia, you've chosen rings today as a visible reminder of this covenant that you are making between yourselves and God. It is symbolic in three specific ways. It's made of precious metal. Gold does not tarnish over time. It actually appreciates over time. It's a perfect circle, a reminder of the unbrokenness of your relationship. And thirdly, it's a daily visible reminder of this union. John, would you take Olivia's ring, please? Would you place it on her left ring finger, and would you repeat these words to her? With this ring, With this ring I, thee wed, I thee wed, and pledge to you, and pledge to you my love and devotion, so long as we both shall live. So long as we both shall live. Could I have the groom's ring, please? <laughs> Olivia, would you place John's ring on his finger, please, and say to him these words, With this ring, I thee wed, and pledge to you my love and devotion, so long as we both shall live. I'd like to invite everyone, please, if you would please stand. And we are going to pray over John and Olivia today. And we are going to ask that you would join with us as we pray together for God's blessing and keeping over their lives. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. And we are so grateful for this moment that we stand not only in the presence of our family and friends, but God, ultimately, we stand in your presence I thank you for John and Olivia. We thank you for bringing them together for such a time as this. Father, we know that there are great plans in store for their life, but we also know that there are great challenges. We know that we cannot do this on our own. We must have your strength and wisdom. Lord, I pray over John today that you would anoint him as the husband that you have called him to be. Lord, I pray that you will give him the wisdom I pray that you will give him the strength and the honor, Father, to love his wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. I pray that each day you will teach John what it means to be a godly husband unto his wife and eventually a godly father unto his children. We pray that you will anoint him and pray that you will strengthen him. Lord, we pray over Olivia today. We thank you for everything that you've done in her life to bring her to this moment. Now, Father, we pray that you would anoint Olivia to be the godly wife that you have called her to be today, that she will serve and honor her husband as unto the Lord in all things. And together, Father, their lives would blossom and bloom into a beautiful testimony of your goodness and faithfulness. I pray that you'll give Olivia the wisdom, the grace, and the guidance, Lord, as she Lord, submits her life now to you and to her husband. I pray for their future family that together, Father, you will bless this household. Lord, I also pray for their families, their parents, their siblings. I pray that together they will see your hand at work in their lives. And so today we honor you and we commit them now to your keeping and your care. We thank you that with you all things are possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, with this union of hearts and hands, and in the presence of Almighty God and these witnesses, and by the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel and according to the laws of the state of Arizona, today, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. John, you may now kiss your bride.
Would the two of you please turn and face your family and friends this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. For the very first time, it is my privilege to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Phillips. behalf of Jonathan and Olivia and their families, thank you very, very much for celebrating with them today. That was kind of an appropriate song, I think. But uh, we are so grateful that you were here today. They are having a reception at a different location by invitation only. So thank you for coming. This will conclude the ceremony, but you will have the opportunity to greet them as you leave. God bless you. You are dismissed today.